Welcome to a new series of On Two Wheels. We've got some great stuff planned for you in this series, including this little beauty here, the Royal Enfield Bullet. We're going to be doing a review on this. But Corey, this series I'll be reviewing the Triumphs, Ducatis and BMWs, and a few more surprises in between. You've got to keep watching. Sounds like you're going to have an exciting time this year. You're also going to be working, Corey's also going to be working with Nikki. Welcome back to On Two Wheels, Nikki. Nikki Shehow will be uh, doing our motocross reviews with Corey. So there's going to be there's going to be some excitement there. Those two are motocross machines. It's going to be fun. But now it's time to visit the Perth Motorcycle and Scooter Show. We've got a rather special guest here with me at the moment. His name's Matthias. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thanks. Pretty good. Yeah. Now, you've got this uh, rather wonderful motorcycle. You are going around Australia as well as the world on this motorcycle. Yeah, I left like four years ago home and like with the stops and works like three years riding around. You're doing it just for the love of motorcycling. Exactly. That was the dream of mine when I was a kid. Yep. I was like 14 years old. I had my first motorcycle. It was a 49cc two-stroke bike. Yep. And so I, with friends, we went off summer holidays and crossed Switzerland, the Alps to the Italian part of Switzerland. Yep. And that's the big trip over there, you know? Yep. That was our, our big trip. Big thing, yeah. Yeah, yep. because it's 300Ks. So but you, you do that in a, in a couple of days, you know? And then on the road back home, I thought about it. Once in life, if I get the chance, I'm going to do it. You also, you go to Peru a little bit, I believe, and, and help run a motorcycle trip in Peru where they go up to Machu Picchu and all that sort of thing? Exactly, yeah. So I went backpacking in South America. After a couple of months, I changed my motorcycle, my backpack into a motorcycle. I get a motorcycle down there, a Yamaha XT600, Tenere in those days, 1993. And I had no really gear with me. I had only backpacking gears and no spare parts, nothing. But I met a guy that did already a big trip from the States down South America and he was on his way back north. Yeah. So I joined him and he showed me actually how, how to survive on a bike, uh, yeah. two wheels in traveling in remote areas <laughs> and how to, without insulation maps, so I was starting to carry a stack of hay. Yeah. on my back on my bike to get have some insulation underneath the tent you know oh, really yeah oh because I, I had low freaking insulation mattress <laughs> oh my god <laughs> now look tell me you you've obviously you wanted to do adventure riding so you thought oh no i'll go out and buy a bmw did you no uh, uh, i grew up with motorcycle yeah. as a mechanic and there was too many warranty work yeah. on the european motorcycles yeah. for many years so, and then we had also Hondas in the place where I work, and I grew up, they said actually they came out, it's a Honda Trans Yeah. Uh, they came out in 1987 when I started my apprenticeship, right. and we had never problems, and then like, I did my stuff, traveled all over with single cylinder yeah. bikes yeah. mostly, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and those run out after 50, 100,000 kilometers, depending how you ride them. And then when he came up to do to plan my trip around the world, I checked it out what kind of bike was sure it was gonna be a Honda, because it's the most trustable bikes for me. And then was sure I need a two-cylinder, a V-twin. Yeah. There could be the Africa twin as well. We had the Africa twins That's in right, Europe, yeah, the yeah. 650s, yeah, yeah. the 750s. They are V-twin water-cooled bikes, but uh, they are too heavy. They have a little bit more weight and a little bigger engine, so you need more fuel and it's more weight. That's right. Now, so you went out and bought a brand new bike, did you? No, no. So, you know, on a trip like that, when you go Middle East, Far East, you don't know what's really going to happen, you know? You don't know if you're going to leave your bike or whatever, you yeah. know? So you want to get a cheap bike. A cheap, reliable bike, you know? Yeah, well, a Honda Trans Alp, you must have paid a few grand for it. How much did you pay for it? Uh, well, the bike was already 14 years old when I got it. Oh, really? Yeah. I bought it in 2005. The bike was yeah. from 1991. So wow. it was 14 years old and it had 55,000 kilometers on. And how many has it got on now? I see it's only got 10,000 on at the moment. I put a two on it now, That's so <laughs> it has really 210,000. 210,000. Yeah. 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 And how much work have you had to do? You had to get the cylinder head off and all that? Uh, well, I do the service by myself, oh, I think. I should think you would, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need two pet bottles, a couple of pet bottles, and do my oil change. Yeah. And and uh, no, no major problem, only the clutch. Yeah. It's a little bit small clutch because all the, the weight on it, it's like always two passenger ridings. Right. 
So the clutch I do every 50, 60,000 Ks. So our, our viewers can actually um, keep up with your adventures because you're on, uh, what's it, Global Global Biking. Global Biking. Yeah. yeah, globalbiking.com, so they can keep up with all your adventures. Okay. And I believe Honda here in WA are going to look after you and give you some spare parts, I believe. Yeah, it looks like pretty good. Yeah, they're going to help me out. I need a new uh, rear rotor for the disc brakes and oh. get all the spare parts for Africa ready for oh, my next fantastic. and last uh, continent. Well, look, we'll keep up with you. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll sort of keep uh, reporting on how you're doing. And, uh, Sweet. I'm going to let you go because I believe you've got to go on stage very shortly as okay. well. So you're world That's famous good. here in Perth at the moment. Good luck, mate. <laughs> good luck, Matt. Nice Thanks to have met you. All for your support, mate. No problems, mate. Cheers. Yeah. I've come across these caravans built by Jayco. They're actually a caravan suitable for motorcycles. So um, we're just going to run through a few questions with uh, Nick. 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 Corey. 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 Good. Good. Um, with these caravans, how long are they building these caravans for motorcycles? So they started building them about two years ago, um, and the demand's just been sensational. It was a bit of a hole in the market. People were wanting to buy a standard caravan and just gut it. Yep. And it just doesn't work. It has to be purpose built in the chassis and, and so on. And uh, so we came up with this concept, and ever since we haven't been able to keep up with demand. It's terrific. Yeah, rightio. There's been a shortage of sort of like motorcycle trailers out there in general. You can go buy your 6x4, you can go buy all your, your tandem trailers, but you can't get one for a motorcycle. So, so are you going to be doing more of these through the. Through the... Um, look, that's yet to to be seen but for the most part this is doing the trick it's a it's a difficult product to build it's there's a lot of engineering gone into it with certain weight criteria and limitations yep not many vehicles can pull big loads so there's a demand for big heavy trailers but the reality is not a lot of people can actually pull them so we have to be mindful of that and yep. build a product that is suitable for a greater market than just the, the odd handful of people with a big truck. Nice, I might get you to run, run us through it if you can, just we'll go for a wander through the caravan and, and show us what sort of yeah. features it's got. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, Nick, so this is the back of the workshop, so what sort of features do they have here? I noticed some beds on the side, are they easy to put down and pick up? And Yeah, it's easy, they're just a, a set of tilting bunks. Uh, right. We have people with two children, one child, four children, so we can customised to a certain degree. Right. We bring the bikes in, we've got enough tie down points to keep the Yeah, I know all these. Yep. Pretty well mounted and you've got the, we'll just the workbench. Just a little workbench there just for a bit of oil and, and rag and whatever if you want to do a bit of maintenance and a, a helmet holder up there so you can put the helmets up out of the way. If the customer wanted it, could they go for, for two of those as an option as opposed to those two of them? Those sorts of things, yeah. You can, you can, you can switch yeah. around yeah. and Once you've got the nucleus in place, yep. those things are just a, a bit of fluffing around the edges basically. Well, this is this is mum and mum and dad's domain in here. We've got a queen bed that folds out out the front and a folding dining area. We've got a nice big fridge to keep a few, yeah, I few the, drinks cold. Which I noticed the fridge, the most important thing in the motorcycles, the fridge has got to be big enough. Yeah. It's a fully reverse cycle air conditioner system. We've got flat screen television and radio CD DVD and importantly we've got a shower and toilet in there for the girls and um, Excellent. when the kids have been out on their dirt bikes and uh, all grubbied up, you can get them in there and tidy them up before you put them to bed. So. on the bike. Um, a lot of people come to these shows, there's a lot of people who have maybe never ridden before who have the aspiration to get on the bike and get going. There's people who also um, are feeling the pinch of rising fuel costs, uh, also the fact that they live quite far out from their work and maybe considering the option of actually commuting on a motorcycle. So I wanted to chat to Lenny today and um, you know just find it about find a bit about how we actually get going on the bike, what a training school such as Motorcycle Training WA can actually do for you to get you up proficient and safe on the motorbike. So you're taking people from scooter level right up to super, super bikes? Yep, yep. Uh... 
for the 15 and a half for the scooter riders. They, they take the test at 16. All right. We're actually there uh, taking them out on the road, uh, so they're getting used to, because uh, we're teaching them from their first ever license, the first road rules. Um, it's not like somebody who's had a car license and knows what's happening on the road. Yes. We're trying to teach the scooter riders from, from leaving the house to going from A to B and obviously riding safely and still set themselves up in the correct road position. All right. And obviously um, making sure that when they do get a green light, they know to give way to oncoming vehicles, stuff like that. And you'd be surprised how many, even people with cars, do not give way to oncoming vehicles. <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't think I'd be too surprised <laughs> about that. Yeah. Um, so you take them to a very quiet place to begin with where there's no traffic? You don't get them out on the road? No, uh, first lesson we, we go, uh, we obviously make sure they can ride the bike, we go through the bike with them, scooter, it doesn't matter if it's 250 or not, go through the bike with them. Uh, we obviously make sure they can handle the bike, low speed control. Oh yes. And uh, obviously doing a quick stop over 50k, which is part of the test as well. Okay. Um, we go through the road craft with them, where they should be positioned in the road. Um, also, the scooter riders, I make sure that I'm pretending I'm with a set of traffic lights and they're oncoming in different vehicles and things like that. And I'm saying, okay, who has got the right to way now, me or you? So and try and go through that. So you're aiming to get the, the riders thinking about what they're actually doing on the bike. So yeah. once you've got the comfortable out in a quiet spot, take them out on the road yeah. and yeah. get them really confident. Yeah, and because once once they are, they leave our tuition and pass the test, we're trying to make sure that they're as safe as they can possibly be. Yes. Because you know we don't want them to be a statistic. Sustainable Transport Company has been um, very passionate about developing uh, a, a, an electric motor scooter and actually not only scooters but you've got a couple of electric bikes yeah, that's right, yeah. anything on two wheels but electric and um, it's a fantastic little machine it, it looks great it's an excellent commuter machine and, and what I like about it is that it's completely silent yes it is and you can ride it all night with lights on and it'll hardly detract from the rain so the lights really don't take this now you can ride them at night time day time any time you like. So it's completely electric? No yes, fuel? Yes it is. Yeah, no, and very clean because it's only electric and all you need to do is plug them in like you're plugging in an iron. Okay, it takes, it's as okay. simple as plugging in an iron to, to charge them up. Right, and how long are you going to have to charge it up for? Uh, you can get probably 50% in an hour, you can get 80% uh, in three hours, and I mean you can ride say 30Ks, 40Ks, charge up for another hour and then get another 20Ks out. Right. I mean that's so, really attractive to have that feature. So at the end of the day you would just plug her in, leave her overnight and then get back on it the next day it is so, and away that's you go. Right, exactly. Plug it in and leave it, that's what we do here. Yes. We just leave it at night time, plug it in, and it's all ready to go. How many Ks it's done here, sitting here, it's done about 20 Ks just sitting here. <laughs> 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 that's how to go a long way without going anywhere. <laughs> Tell me the, um, the reason why you've created these electric scooters. Well, I've got a background in, in sustainability myself. I was originally farming, uh, broad acre biological farming, and so it's a really interesting exercise because uh, Mother Nature does everything if you create the right climate. I'm trying to create the, the right climate with these uh, electric scooters, you yes. see. And I've also got a long history in transport related matters, mostly uh, road transport, uh, just road construction. The present system isn't sustainable because it's taking up too much room, okay? Yes. So it's going to reduce the amount of bulk of vehicles on the road. Okay. That's number. And in your car parks, hospitals, uh, anywhere there's a car park, we bring these in and replace a lot of the bulk of the vehicles, which is only really for community purposes anyway. Yes, yes. So who's the market aimed at? It, it's actually a, it's a broad range market from everybody, from from the, from the family. If you if you say it's a family related uh, vehicle, that would be absolutely right. Uh, from dad going to work, mother going shopping, kids going to university, higher education. Um, Occupations like nursing, that yes. sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's a really easy bike just to jump on and go. There's no, there's no noise. Yeah. There's no exhaust fumes. <laughs> well, it's something to consider. Um, electric scooters from the Sustainable Transport Company.
been a massive event here. Three days of non-stop action and a lot of new releases from all the manufacturers. In fact, while I go in there and have a look at the rest of the stuff that's on show, we'll go and check out what Keith's gone to see with BMW with their new sports bike release. We're here at Auto Classic BMW. No, don't panic. We've uh, not changed two wheels for four. We're still sticking with the two wheels. But I've got to say, BMW over the years have produced some amazing sports cars. Their bikes, on the other hand, are, how can we say it, been a bit boring. You know, you can imagine the bloke who owns a BMW going home, getting off his bike and putting on a nice comfortable pair of slippers, nice comfortable jumper and smoking a pipe. But those days have changed. In fact, they started to change not long ago. Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor decided to do a trip long way up, round, down, inside out and all that sort of stuff. And um, they decided to go with BMW motorcycles. <laughs> KTM, you missed out big time. Now, it became everyone who wanted to do adventure of motorcycling went to BMW. But still, the people on the road bikes, it was boring. You still had those two big lumps sticking out the side, even with the K1300. It's a nice bike, don't get me wrong, but it, it's a BMW. But now things have changed. You want to come and have a look at this. Here it is. Erwin, pleased to meet you, mate. Pleasure to have now, you. Now, you're going to talk to me about this little bike here. S1000 RR. Correct. Not S1000 RR. Double, Double R. R. Okay. Tell me a little bit about it, mate. Apparently, it's the nuts. It's the duck's nuts. It's uh, the absolute fire breather. Uh, awesome power to weight ratio. 183 kilos dry. 193 horsepower. So 183 kilos dry. Let's talk about... We, no one rides a dry bike. They ride... They have fuel in it, they have oil in it. Yep. 205 kilos. That's 205 all. kilos, fully fueled with that. That's better. Now then, it's got um, inline four. Absolutely. So it's, it's carried on from like the, the GSR, GSXRs and all that sort of thing. Yep. Same sort of motor. So it's competing directly with the inline four cylinders, the GSXRs, ZX10 Kawasaki, and Honda Fireblade. Okay. Power to the rear wheel, 160 brake horsepower, is that right? Correct. Wow, that is awesome. Now, how does this come standard? Uh, it comes standard with a four-way uh, mapping for wet, ra uh, wet riding, uh, normal road riding and two race modes with uh, road tyres or slicks depending on what you're using on the track. So it's not like a traction control, it's just a, a different style of road, or yep. is it traction control? No, it's power mode setting. Power mode setting, yep. is it, right? It does come as an optional extra to have traction control and ABS, mm -hmm. but as a standard bike it comes equipped with uh, four-way uh, power mapping and a factory quick shifter as well. And it's got a quick shift to fit it on. As standard. Wow. Now, we've got to say, what sort of price are we looking at for this, babe? Uh, right away for B a This is BMW, yep. and we've been looking at the price of some of the cars, some of the bikes. Go on. We've been uh, pricing this bike extremely aggressively. So, uh, as a standard bike, it's 23200 right away, all on road. And if you decide that you want to go for a fully optioned one, which includes your ABS brakes and traction control, it's 25700 right away. That's not bad, that's not bad. Now, this is obviously gonna lend itself to the track. Correct. Have you sold any for the track? Yep, Anybody absolutely. interested? Yeah? Yep. We've had, taken a number of orders, so a lot of our guys are jumping in early uh, to avoid delay for delivery. Um, they're gonna be one of the first uh, to have the bikes allocated when we do receive them. That looks so much like a K100, it's silly. <laughs> hey, look at that, isn't that amazing? Tell us a bit about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the new 1600cc Triumph Thunderbird. I've been waiting to have a look at this thing in the flesh too. Oh, she's a big girl. <coughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the motorcycle and scooter show from Perth. It was, uh, it was a fun three days, wasn't it? Definitely, definitely exciting, and um, yeah, we had two great a... machines there. Absolutely oh, superb. Unbelievable, some of the ways that they configure a bike. The worst thing is just watching the rocks. You just got to miss those rocks down there. You can see them from it. It's probably quite badly. Yeah, and just so you, your back wheel don't hit it and 
throw you out. You just want to get to the peg, uh, to the tape, and then boom. Is it, you're going to take a look here. every time you come through the course, is that right? Best to, because if the rocks move and things like that, yeah, because the next rider behind you, could kick a rock. especially sidecars, they yeah. like to move a few rocks, and there could be a big rock in where you're dropping into. Ah. So you don't want to come over with a thing and find it's a big rock in front there that's been moved. As you see the guy in the middle of the creek, yeah, he's not, he's not going to the toilet, he's actually waiting for his junior rider to come through. It's great that they escort the junior riders through each section and uh, help show them the way. And just to catch them if they, they do crash or fall off and can catch the bike and get the bike out of the way or try and stop them from drowning in the creek. Right. Fantastic effort from young Luke. He's on the little one, two, five. Yeah, two stroke. There is a few four strokes here. Oh, oh, there's oh. a foot down, that's all right. He's hit a big rock with a front wheel. Yeah. I feel sorry for his poor mind, though. He's got to do some running laps. But here we go again. No, brilliant. Clean run, brilliant. fantastic climb. Yep. Now, who's coming through the course now, Simon? Uh, Tim Price. Um, Tim is uh, one of our top A graders, uh, multiple West Australian junior champ, um, currently ranked probably number two in the state at the moment. Now, the red plate means he's following the red course markers, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Oh, as you can see there. Yeah, red, red indicates he's an A grader and he has to follow the red arrows in the course. You'll, you'll see him, he'll set himself, you'll see him changing gears and he'll change gears for different parts of the section. They generally run in second gear as a general rule of thumb with the A graders and they use third and fourth for the big steps. Now you'll see he'll stop here, put his front wheel where he wants it and then go for it. you see the bottom end power working. That's a great leap. drives up there. This, thing's, this thing he's riding is an Italian beater, uh, 290cc. Six-speed gearbox on them. They're an aluminium frame, weigh about 70 kilos, and they're absolute rocket ships off the bottom end. Oh, this these things. Is, this, yeah, is this is six, the finish. Foot this wall, isn't it? Oh, oh easy, foot. yeah, easy. And then up over a log and muddy crap underneath. Oh, oh, there he goes. He just got through for a one. He was very lucky there. You see, his front wheel landed on the tape. Yep. If he, if his front wheel had gone out of the tape, he would have copped five points. That would have been a maximum points he would have lost. Well, okay. This is Tim Price coming through now. Is that right? Oh no, Simon. Uh, Simon, no, Simon Price. Price. Yeah, Simon, Simon Price. Price. James. There's a whole family that ride trials, and Bears, they're all. Isn't yeah, they they actually they're beta distributors as well. Um, so if anyone wanted any information on on them, I guess they could just give the beta distributor in West Australia a call and speak to one of the prices. The price is right. You know, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I knew. Yeah. You had to, didn't you? Yeah, I knew yeah. you were going to say the price is right. That's but I'm not Ian Turpy. No. <laughs> Nothing. No, I tell nothing. you what, this, this is amazing. Look at that. The control is absolutely phenomenal. If you notice, they've got one finger on the brake and one finger on the clutch. They don't actually hold the, the brake and the clutch with their full, fan, full hand. I tell you what, if you slip off, you'll have a finger on your crutch. I don't know about that. Oh, definitely. Because these definitely. rocks are really solid. Yeah. Here we go. Well, he, he seems to accomplish this one so far. We better not put the mockers on him yet. We've done that lately to a few people. Oh, what? So that's so clear, that's clear stage. That's his Tim's turn. Uh, we might ask, yeah. Tim will be riding the red course. So that's uh, A grade. So this means he's going to go up that bloody great rock there. Well, yep. I can't wait to see that. Try and get up the bloody great rock. So far, one person's only made it, and he's the fella, isn't it? That's Lewis. Whoa. Oh, that's Ooh, cool. Jesus. Lewis is just back from a trip to Spain where he's been training with the uh, Spanish the world the trials, <laughs> the world trials champions over there. Yep. Oh. Well, well, let's see if it pays off. Jeez, control is just unbelievable. Oh, fantastic jump! That's deep as well, that water, isn't it? Yeah. There's a big puddle there. Now he's got to go up this sheer rock face here. What a challenge. Oh, one. Um, penalty. Unlucky. You've got to have no brains to be doing this stuff. Oh, oh. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. 
unlucky. Made it once before, but obviously not this time. Here we have Lewis Nolan, the brother of Alex Nolan. His brother's actually the current Australian champ, junior champion, and now he's moved up to um, up to seniors. This section's a bit tricky for the A graders. Obviously not for um, Lewis Nolan. There you see young Alex Nolan following the drink. Ah, oh, brilliant work there from Lewis Nolan. The first person that we've seen make it over there today. No, he's done it once before. Just do it just now. These, these two young boys are competing for the state championship um, and their brothers. If it was my brother, I'd be telling him the wrong way to go. Well, you've seen the boys go around on their trials bikes. We're in the um, private training track for the uh, Price Boys. Um, Neil, you just want to run us through the bike and what, explain how they work and what's different between a normal motorcycle because they're not exactly the same as a normal motorcycle. Now, the, whilst in the, the basic makeup of the bike, they are very similar to your normal motocross or enduro bike. Um, they are quite unique. They're extremely lightweight and they're built specifically for trials. Um, like, like all bikes, they've got a um, six-speed gearbox, um, a normal normal six plate clutch so it's like your normal bike there's no fancy centrifugal clutches people sometimes think there's something unique about the clutch but other than that they're basically a two-stroke motorcycle um, this one is a 290 they come in various levels starting from about 50 cc through to 290 to 300 cc um, there's one two fives 200s 250s for the for the juniors as they come up through the levels um, the bikes are extremely lightweight they weigh Around the 70 kilo mark, there's a few fluctuations in weight, two or three kilos either way, but they're all around the 70 kilo mark. Um, they're, they're all built of aluminium, they've got a very small fuel tank, and the, the weight, the general weight of the bike is, is very low and back towards the foot pegs. Um, that allows us to ride on the back wheel like we do. Um, they're water cooled, um, it's a hydraulic operated clutch. Um, they've got a very, very short suspension stroke because mm -hmm. When you're riding, you need to use the full stroke of the suspension to get travel. lift, to get to get um, as much traction and drive as you possibly can. They're very, very low geared. Um, they're like tractors, and we, when we're actually riding, doing genuine trials, we only really use the bottom four gears, and then fifth and sixth is kind of an, an overdrive for in between the obstacle sections. The section. So yeah, to get oh, there right. quickly. So. Um, I've noticed the tyre pressures are really low. Do you, like normal bikes, you run around the 25 to 32, around there. So what sort of tyre pressures are you we, running in these? In the rear, which is the most important for traction, we can go, depending on the rider's weight, yep. you'll go as low as three pound. Rightio. So it's almost so it's... nothing in the tyre. In wet conditions, you go, go right down low to like three pound. Yep. Nothing more than five in the rear. And we run six and a half constantly in the front. It's always okay. six and a half pound. Five, so yeah. they're an extremely soft compound tyre. The um, the tyre is like really extremely grippy, but also they wear a bit quicker because of that. You don't see these in a normal motorcycle shop. Where would you actually purchase one of these? Um, the, the best way to get a hold of them is to either hop online to Trials Australia or our website, which is www.beta.id.au. Oh, yeah. we're, we're the West Australian beta and gas gas dealers. Okay, so um, that's why you've got and this training track here. And... Yeah, basically, yep. yes. You've, yep. got to, you've got to get into the local scene, meet the people and like speak to the clubs to get a hold of it. because. Trolls at the moment is unfortunately quite small, so we've kind of got to support ourselves. For someone to get started, what's it going to cost them? A brand new bike, which is not what a starter needs, but no, no, a brand no, new, yep. worst case scenario, you're looking at $10,000. Yep. Just just under about 9500 to nine eight. That's, that's a current 2010 model. Yeah, that's the brand new model. And trolls, unlike many other sports, you, you don't need to do big modifications. The yep. bike as is, is, is all you need. It's not like motocross where you need you need revalving, re, like right, yeah, completely yeah. redo it, new exhaust systems and whatnot. 
but start you can start from as low as probably eight hundred dollars for an old twin shop right yeah and there's any any price range in between there so an eight hundred dollar one will do the same job as something like this yeah not not quite the same job as this but right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to get started in the sport yeah. um you Easy just way. you basically just need ankle protecting boots long pants helmet yeah, yeah motorcycling australia license and your club your club membership the clubs do a um they look after new starters so the first the first couple of rides your membership's free they they give you honorary memberships so you only have to pay for your entry to the event and a one day license or your ma yeah, yeah. license yeah, yeah. now we're here in the back of fraser motorcycles what is this area greg this is the free delivery area okay. okay so this is when someone buys a bike this is where we bring them to get them ready for them to take home or accessorize okay. this is where we do the the pretty easy stuff, uh, bolt on of accessories, getting the bikes ready for delivery, the whole shooting match. We don't, uh, we don't tend to bring out any hammer and chisels here. It's all, all spectator viewable stuff. Right, and they can have a look and watch their bikes being done. And people can yeah watch from the showroom through there. They certainly and can see exactly what's going on. Yep. Now, there's a few bikes obviously uh, on their way to new owners. They are. We've actually had quite a few owners uh, sit out there on the lounge and the service reception are out there. And uh, one guy in particular sat here, come in for two days with the accessories, watched his bike be pre-delivered, then watched to get all the accessories fitted in one hit, so he was wrapped. He's seen it from the word go. Fantastic, In the fantastic. middle of it come out of the box. Now we're walking into the main workshop area. As we come out here, we've got our detailing area. We've got two, two detailers we keep going all the time. Those Having, machines look fantastic. They always yep. do a great job. Getting ready for pickup. On this side we have a uh, Ducati Tex. Both going hard. Yep. Another Ducati Bay here. As we come over, you've got Harley Davidson area. So or one of the Harley Davidson areas. As you'll notice, we have oil being pumped up from the basement. Everything's all central, isn't it? We've got the, these tubes here, obviously for exhaust. They're extraction fans, yeah, yep. retractable extraction fans for the exhaust. And we can see the oil see. lines, so they've got no oil cans, drums running sitting on the floor. Here, we'll try and stay out of this gentleman. It's in the BMW area. As you can see, all piped in. All piped in from the basement, no mess, no fuss. Gee, it's an improvement, even from the 44-gallon drum or the old plastic containers. That's it. It's amazing. No rubbish on the floor, nothing to step over. You have the Ducati and BMW, uh, one type of oil, they're set up, and the Harley Davidson set up for their type of and oil. And they pipe to each individual bay. Pump as through with each bay as needed. Fantastic. On that one. Wash bay, Wash bay, as we can see, we roll up, we have two BMW areas. Now these are more BMWs ready more to go BMWs out, More BMWs ready to go, servicing, pre-delivered. And we're only halfway through the workshop at this stage. <laughs> We've got a bit of room to play with. Alright. Then we come to another Harley Bay. Each tech has two ramps, two work stands they can go off. So they're always kept going so they can work on one bike and if they get somewhere they can't keep they going. They can keep going with two at the one time. Bring the That's second right. one up. There we That's go. what we sell. We sell ours so yep. we can't muck around. We can't have techs stand around doing nothing. Again, Harley and Harley. Harley being one of the biggest sellers here. Yep. Up on this side, it's probably an area you don't want to visit too often. This is smash repair. Uh -huh. Right, so yeah, these are the uh, unfortunate side of things. The ones that haven't kept the shiny, uh, shiny side up, mate. Yep. That's it. Exactly, yep. exactly. That happens occasionally. And that brings us to the back of the workshop, which is, as you can see, an amazing facility. What you'll see on the roof, and you would have seen through the rest of the, the building, uh, the insulation and the, is recycled paper. Oh, that's awesome. That's yep. it. That's a really Insulates, good Insulates, soundproofs. So, so as much as we can, we've remained green. You got, it's important these days, that isn't is, it? It is very so everybody's important. everybody's very conscious of being environmentally friendly. That's it. Motorcycle riders is probably more than other form of like mm -hmm. car drivers and everything mm -hmm. like that because they're more efficient to start off with. That's it. And it's great to see that sort of facility and that sort of recycling and care. Well, we're doing our there. best. I mean, these days, uh, you know, we've got to be innovative. And there's uh, no doubt this is what this store is. Um, I mean, gone are the days when, you know, you can come in and, and pay a couple of hundred dollars to some bloke with a greasy pair of overalls and rubbish all over the floor. And, you know, you may have done a, a fairly good job on your bike, but that's not uh, what people want these days. That's not what they call value for service. And we strive to, uh, you know, to go that extra mile. Fantastic. You know, Fantastic. that's what we hope to, uh, to go above and beyond uh, what the customer expects. Right. Well, thanks for the uh, tour through the Absolute workshop, Absolute right? pleasure. Glad it's, to have uh, you. It's been great to see. Anytime. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Greg. I don't know who's been to a motorcycle dealership before that's had a lift, but this is amazing. I'll just push the button over here. And look at that. 
it's one of the things of having a modern dealership, many levels. They've got to move bikes from the basement right all the way up to the top floor where there's the display case. And just look at this, two bikes, no problems at all. Basement, workshop, dyno rooms through there, and upstairs they've got the feature showcase. I mean, a lift in a motorcycle dealership, who would have thought? This young lad didn't even walk the course, no. so he obviously knows it quite well. He must own the property. Well, they say the four strokes are out there, but I can't, haven't seen one yet. Most of these guys are still riding all the two strokes. Ooh. That was uh, pretty high, yeah. high front wheel. I, was about, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to go over backwards then. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, I find it hard enough to ride up the pavement sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speed humps are a challenge. <laughs> and here comes the rain just to make it better. Yep. Good ride! And didn't put his foot down once. That, put... that uh, constitutes a clear round. Yes. That's right. Yep. Nice, nice Takes some doing, doesn't it? Eh? Takes Take some doing. The brilliant. balance is just phenomenal. Balance and control, it's... Balance and control, yes. And that's a big jump up there. We haven't got a camera on the other side, but if you can see the other side, that's actually quite a big jump up there. And they just sort of wedge it in. He's just dabbed a foot down there. You got Lewis talking him through it, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Lewis Nolan, he's just passed this section clear. So he's just talking him through it and telling him where to put, sort of place the wheel, I suppose. Yeah. The other guy said he's not happy with it, which he was. <laughs> Obviously wasn't. No. Nah. We've tried walking up these rocks earlier. They're very slippery. Well, as you saw, Alex. Fall in the creek. Fall in the creek, yeah. This is a tricky section. Young Lewis is the only boy to make it. Oh, he's had about five dabs now already, I think. Yeah. Oh, I think he's just selected third gear, which is pretty tall to... That's gotta be 15. A, no, he didn't do that. No, no, that's no. obviously a um, five. Yeah. We were at the first bike show. These boys did a fantastic show yep. there, and they were actually on stage as well. We managed to get them up onto stage. And off. Yeah, that's right. Alex at the moment is only 16. Six, this is his first year in seniors. Um, he's just finished the junior Australian championships and come first. That's an interesting way he took that. Yeah. I, yeah. He didn't touch the tape, so I suppose that's all right. Yeah. This kid's got some class. I, I, he, Unbelievable, isn't it? Look at that. What he was doing at the bike show was amazing. The balance is just incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, unlucky there, young Alex. And he's looked at the camera, he said, bugger the camera's on me again. Yep. It takes him doing, he's just, just muscled it out of there, really, for a small guy. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, he'd probably weigh 40 kilos. Wet. Wet. Which he is now. Oh, wet weight, yep. Yeah, yep, after he went in, this, in the drink. Yeah. Here we go, let's see if he can, can pass this section. Clearing 
the throat a bit. Yep, two strokes, so they've yep. got to clear it out. Oh, brilliant, brilliant work. Fantastic, fantastic, that's awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't even climb up that <laughs> without a motorcycle. <laughs> And we thought that was hard. Now he's going to get up this as well. His brother talking him through it here. Yep. That's unbelievable, the punishment these bikes take. Yeah. And we were just talking earlier on, they've only got a small bash plate underneath. And a, and a tiny bit of waffle rubber. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. That was amazing. Oh, just touch the tape. You're allowed to touch it, but you're not allowed to go over it. Oh, right, okay. Yep. That's the rules. Yep. Well, that's fantastic. Oh, he's done pretty well there. I would say he had a three there. Three well, we hope you enjoyed the trials. Um, we're going to come back and see these boys again one day, aren't we? That'll be brilliant. I think me, you and Simon are going to get on one and see if we can do the white pass. I don't think we got a chance in hell, to be honest with you. Oh. But we, hey, maybe we'll give it a go. Maybe we'll get the Alex to teach us. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we've embarrassed him enough in the past on the Sorry. show, so maybe it's his turn to embarrass us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll go for that. And yes, folks, we're at round four of the State Motocross Championship, and this is about the driest weather we've seen all day. Uh, had a great chat to some of the riders so far, and you know what? A bike's just fallen over right over there. That's how bad it is. <laughs> it's atrocious. No one was riding it at the time. No one was riding it at the time, but there's been plenty of spills on the track behind us as well. Now, I've got a new person to my right. Keith, would you like to introduce yourself? I could do. <laughs> to be honest. Nikki, how are you doing? Welcome to Riding WA. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. Now you're going to be covering uh, most of our motocross events, yes. I believe, yes. which will be uh, something that uh, I really look forward to because that means I don't have to get soaking wet and covered in mud every weekend, so it'll be really good. It'll be your turn to get covered in all that sort of crap. Well, I see that you're not very appropriately attired today, Keith. You've even no. got the mud splattered on you. No, I actually, Welcome to I, motocross. I actually arrived here in a leather jacket, believe it or not, but I did take the leather jacket off, which I'm really glad, but I got absolutely covered at one of the... We've got a great shot, though. I got a great shot, you've got to admit it was yeah, a good shot. Yeah, I got a great shot of you covered in mud as well, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, you're going to be covering all the motocross for yes. us, which is good. Yep. And where are you going from here? We've got this event and then we move on. Next weekend we're going up to King of the Cross up at Southern Cross. Hopefully the weather holds out and uh, haven't been there before for a motocross event. Passed through there many times on the way to and from Kalgoorlie, but it should be good. Promises up to $40,000 in prize money. Uh, there'll be various classes racing, so hope to bring you some footage um, come next week. For that sort of prize money, I might even give it a shot. And I don't even have a motocross bike at the moment, but... Push bikes don't count. Push bikes don't count. Maybe a tow rope attached to someone. That might get me around the track at least. It might do. So we've got more racing here today yet yeah, to yes, come. Yes, we have. Yep. We've got... Um, Which will obviously start when it starts raining again. Probably, because it seems yes. that they have a break. Every time the sun comes out, they have a break. Then when it rains, they start racing, which is really intelligent. I must admit that the track is probably the worst motocross track I've seen as far as slush and mud. And there's just caked on mud and grime and you name it, it's on everyone's bike, so. No, it's, it's, the girls are racing today The girls well. are racing. It so we're going to have a chat with a couple of the girls? Yes, it is the state championship for girls, so uh, the top girl riders in the state <laughs> here trying it out, trying out their luck with the boys. So yeah. Trying out their luck with the what? Well, <laughs> in that regard. Oh, I thought it was racing. Yeah, racing ac expertise. Yeah. What do you think I, I came down here for today? <laughs> well, it is the girls. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're not racing. <laughs> oh, so I'm not even with the chance, no. fair enough.
today is Michael Addison, com current number one champion in the state. Michael, welcome along. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Pleasure. Now, today is going to be probably one of the worst motocross conditions I have been to as a spectator. How does it rate as far as you can, you go? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's probably the worst track I've ever ridden or mud anyway. Um, we sort of tried to get cancelled at the start of the day, but apparently they have to run two rounds. So, yeah, we're out there doing what we can. Now, you were with... Uh, the group down at round three which was down at Jindong. Yep. Um, how did you fare after that championship round? Um, not too bad. The first one I had a couple of crashes and managed to get second and then the second one I won um, and they called off after the second race um, due to wet conditions again. Yep. Now Michael is the current state champion as well. He's wearing the number one plate. How has that helped your career so far this year? Um, oh, it's definitely helped my career. Obviously, I'm based here in WA and um, I need to establish myself on a, uh, a state level before moving over east and competing at a national level. So, uh, winning the state round last year was definitely good for me and for KDM, and they promoted me by putting me on the factory team to uh, compete in all the nationals this year. Do you have aspirations perhaps of going over to America or the European field if you can work your way up and sort of hold onto a really good position in the state, in the, not just the state championship but also in the national scene? Yeah, definitely. Um, this year I think is a bit of a learning year for me in the nationals. I'm riding the open class for the first time, first time for a factory team as well. So um, next year I'm planning to, uh, I guess, be in the hunt for a national championship and then yeah, I mean, I'll just keep going as hard as I can for as long as I can and hopefully injury doesn't hold me back and I'd definitely like to get to America at some stage. Here with Dean Porter, local star currently running second in the state championship. Dean, welcome along to Riding WA. Yeah, hey, uh, cheers. It's good to be on here. Now you, like uh, all the other competitors, were down at Jindong uh, probably early this month. How do you find the conditions here today as compared to there at Jindong, which is down at Busselton? Uh, Jindong was a lot better than here. It, they didn't uh, rip the track, so it was still hard back underneath, even though it had a lot of water on it. Uh, this track, they, they ripped it a lot, and it was, it was going to be awesome. If it had been dry, the track would have been awesome, nice and ruddy, but unfortunately the, the rains came and made it a mess, absolute mess. <laughs> How are your championship results going as a result of uh, you pulled out of the first moto today? What actually happened? Um, I got a good start. I was in second behind Addo for a bit and um, then I just had a, a pretty good crash down the straight here. And then I kept going and I just ended up frying a clutch and I, my bike wouldn't go so I had to pull out. It's a bit, a bit spewing because it's in the mud conditions it's sometimes a good chance to make up points. So, But it went the other way for me today. But Is there any chance that we can get the bike back going today? Yeah, yeah, I'll get the I'll get a new clutch in it or I'll ride my, my other bike, my practice bike and get out there in the second moto and just try and stay on, I guess. We've got a big meeting next weekend with the Nationals, so me and Addo sort of want to stay safe at the moment. But How are you going as far as the National scene, scene goes this year? Um, the one one at Wanneroo really helped me heaps um, in, the, in the points, yeah. yeah um, so I'm back up to 10th now and I'm only three or four points off ninth, so... Yeah, we've got one more round to go, which is in Queensland, call them next weekend, and if I can get a couple of good races, I can get up to ninth maybe, so that'll be good, top ten. out in the middle of the track down here at Byford. Uh, veterans are just about to start. Just give you uh, maybe if Keith companion and give you a close-up of this quagmire that these guys are ripping around. Some of the average speeds if you have a look at the uh, the score sheets are around 60 miles an hour. So if you can do 60 miles an hour in that you are doing way better than me because some of it if you walk around the track some of it is actually up to your knees. <laughs>
we're here in the pits with Tracy Burns, who's currently leading the Women's State Motocross Championship. So, a good day so far today. Yeah, so far, so good. Uh, one more race to go at the moment, so yeah, we'll see how we go with that. Excellent. Now, what have you got here? What's your bike? Uh, it's a Kawasaki 250F. Yep. And uh, I noticed it's got a whole lot of stickers on it. Who are some of the sponsors? Uh, Down South Motorcycles, uh, my major sponsor. Excellent, excellent. Yep. Uh, how long have you been riding for? Uh, for about uh, eight years. Okay. Yep. And competing in the motocross for that long as well? Uh, yes. Oh, yep. Fantastic. Right, yep. right. What made you want to get involved? Uh, just learned how to ride when I was about 16, but uh, didn't uh, ride again, sort of. And then all of a sudden, we seen this thing on the Australian Nationals uh, for women, and I was like, oh wow, I want to be involved in that. So yeah, so and it just went from there. Mm. So you've done some national rounds? Yes, in uh, over in the eastern states. Yep, yep. How'd you go there? Uh, not very good. <laughs> uh, top ten, but yeah. Top 10, that's pretty respectable. Yeah, that was a lot of years ago, a few years ago now, we've got a bit better since then. <laughs> right, no worries at all. How many women currently ride motocross? Uh, in this day, well we had about nine on the grid this morning, but because of the conditions the numbers have diminished, yep. so um, nine is a good turnout for us, but just it's good to see as many girls as possible out there. Um, we always try, all the girls try and encourage more girls to come and get involved, because Today is not a very good example, but it is such a good sport to be involved in. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to travel around and meet people, and it's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, how did you? What would you say to some women who are thinking of giving motocross a shot? Yep. How, how would they go about getting involved? Just get a bike. If you, you know, if you've got a bike, just come out to a, just go out to a track, a local club day, and um, your local track, and just give it a go. And, yeah, see how you go. It doesn't matter where you come. If you're having fun, then that's the main thing, yeah. Right, well, best of luck with the rest of the day, Trace. Thanks so much. Thanks very much for talking to Riding WA. Thank you.
Lucky. <laughs> now he's, he's, he's going to go off the step. No, he's not. That's, uh, that's one way of uh, coming up. Uh, now I see why you came third. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Australian champion. This is how you do it. And now I would move. <laughs> there you go.